Now let's discuss about Newton's third law of motion. To many students, this law seems very straightforward and very easy. But let me tell you, this is one of the least understood laws of motion. Even if you think that you have totally understood this law and obviously you will be able to solve problems, very easy problems are asked from this. But it's not necessary that you have understood this law. And in fact, many of the students don't have a clear and correct understanding of what this law is. So just listen to me for next few seconds, next few minutes and this law will be totally clear to you and definitely you will learn something new that you didn't know about this law. Now what is the statement of this law that you generally hear? The general statement of this law that you hear is that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, right? This line is just, uh, you know, embedded in your mind. But that exactly is the reason why you are not able to understand this law correctly. Look, the word every action has an equal and opposite reaction is not the total statement of third law. Even in the actual literature by uh, uh, Sir Newton, the third law was started by this statement, but there were some further explanations of the law that totally changed its meaning. Okay. Look, when you say that every action has equal and opposite reaction, it gives you a wrong feeling that uh, you are having a cause and effect relationship. It's an important term and very famous term, cause and effect relationship. It means that action is causing something and as an effect of action, reaction is happening. So the statement of this law gives you a wrong feeling that action is the cause and reaction is the effect. It's not true. It's totally incorrect. Why? Suppose you have a body A here and another body is B which is in contact with this body B. And suppose you started pushing the body B with body A by applying a force of let's say 5 Newton. Alright. So according to this law, according to Newton's third law, there will be a reaction force by the block B on the block A of 5 Newton. True. But consider the situation that this 5 Newton force which is applied by block B on block A you can say that that is also action on A by B. So that action will again create a reaction and that reaction that you are giving from A to B which is the reaction of this 5 Newton that will again create a reaction. So it will be infinite cycle which is totally rubbish. It cannot happen. Right. So action and reaction these were not defined in Newton's law that what exactly they are and clearly they are not cause and effect relationship. That is why the expression that you write for Newton's law that is not a very you know a very effective statement to write. Rather what statement you should write as Newton's third law is obviously you have to write every force means every action has equal and opposite reaction but there is one statement which is the most effective statement of Newton's third law and that statement is Every force or simply force occurs in pair and they act on different bodies. Now you may be thinking that okay simple enough force occur in pair A applied force on B, B applied force on A. That's it. There, that's where the law ends. But it's not like that. Let me show you a very interesting case. There is block A here sitting on a surface or let's remove the name. There is a block sitting on a surface. All right. This is having a weight mg in the downward direction and a normal reaction will be given by this surface on the block N. Right. And we know that the N in such a case is equal to mg. Now what Many of you will think that this block applied a force mg on the surface and the surface gave a normal reaction and surprisingly the name of this force is also normal reaction. So it gives you a feel that okay this mg is an action and this is a reaction right totally wrong. Why let me tell that to you from both the statements 
from the first statements the force occur in pairs okay are these two forces actually a pair will they always occur in pair no it is possible that mg will be there but n will not be there how i will just attach a string to it and i will pull it up if there is a block here i will attach a string and i will pull it up then what will happen then tension force is present mg force is also present but now n is zero so r mg and n are they are force pair no mg is occurring n is zero they are not force pairs it violates the this statement in the first law that forces need to be present in the pair don't think that okay now mg has formed a pair with t that's not how it works force pair are of similar nature of forces so that also is not true and from the second statement also you can see that they act on different bodies you can see that mg is acting on the block itself right and n is also acting on the same block itself so clearly when you say that a reaction force is generated as a result of this weight this is not happening by newton's third law rather this statement what you are having is newton's first law interesting right how because along this vertical di direction there is no acceleration of this mass if we are considering this mass as the system this block as the system then this system does not have any acceleration along the vertical y axis so net acceleration is zero so net force acting along y direction on this system this is our system so net force acting on that will be zero so what is the net force acting on that that is going to give you n is equal to mg and n is equal to mg is not Uh, happening as a result of newton's third law it can be framed as a question the question can be given this can be shown and n is equal to mg is given by which laws of newton i know many students will take newton's third law of motion that is incorrect now if n let me clear this up and draw it again then if mg and n are not force pairs then what are the other force pairs what i mean to say is that i have written that force occur in pairs right so what is the force pair of mg if n is not the force pair look where is this block kept on some surface under the force of gravity of the earth so if this same block i am drawing here this would be somewhere on the surface of the earth right it will be acted upon by a force mg in the downward direction towards the center of the gravity and it will also pull the gravity pull the earth towards itself with the same force mg this is something that we already know about the gravitational force right so the actual force pair of this block for mg is the force that it applies at the center of the earth this is the actual force pair of it right and what is the force pair of this force normal force if this surface if this block is kept on a surface obviously as it is trying to go down but it will not be able to go down some force will be exerted on this surface which force will uh, generate a normal reaction so the normal reaction between means this normal reaction is not as a result of mg rather it is as a result of tendency of this block to go down for example in case of inclined plane right the normal reaction is not equal to mg right because the tendency of the block to go down in this case is different than its tendency in this case so n is not equal to mg right it's not the force pair of mg so this is a confusion that students have a lot of you i think don't know about this concept so whenever we are drawing such a diagram that we are showing a block here mg is written here normal reaction is present here so actually all the forces acting if i were to show here all the forces acting then a force will be acting at the center of gravity mg that will be equal to this mg and this n will be accompanied by another n another normal reaction i won't call it normal reaction another normal force these are the two force pairs that are going to act in case of any body which is kept kept on uh, you know any surface under the uh, you know force of gravity so this is the total concept now since all of them are equal in this case 
So this n you can remove with this mg, both of them are same and then you will get the very simple version of it that n is equal to mg. Alright, so this statement is a better statement of third law and if you actually start analyzing, you know, different cases that we normally do it, right? Because forces uh, and uh, Newton's laws are something that we keep on applying in natural life and whatever phenomena we see that we try to understand some at some place or the other we apply these laws but if you have incorrect interpretation of the third law as i told you action and reaction funda then at many places some paradox will be created will be confused but if you have this concept in your mind that forces occur in pairs always don't think it as action and reaction then there will be so many things that you realize in real life. I'm not going to discuss all of them here because our study is very much focused towards gate. So all those paradoxes will not be uh, present in your mind. Now, even if you don't know this concept, honestly, your marks are not going to get affected in gate because the maximum use of Newton's third law that you will see in the numericals that are going to be asked in gate will be restricted to drawing the free body diagram. And free body diagram, if you draw, that is not going to change a lot because all the other force pairs will get cancelled. But if you know the right concept, it will be easier for you to avoid any further confusion in Newton's third law of motion. Alright.